got back. I <clears throat> did like five or four recordings of this so far, and it's fucked up every single time, so I'm just going to try again. So what we're going to do first is we're going to open up Series Editor 3.5, which I've done already. I'm going to go to File, Open, Document.Model, and you're going to navigate yourself to Content, Series Sam 3, Models, and Player. And we're going to open up Rich Knuckles for this example. If you're using a female character, you can open up Serious Sammy instead. So we've got Rich Knuckles and this sexy piece of ass right here. What we're going to do is we're going to go to Config. And just in case you don't see any tabs from now on, if you don't see it, click View and make sure you enable it. So we're going to go to Meshes, highlight Rich and press X. That deletes him because we don't want him there. We want to make our own mesh. So click the plus icon. Go to Mesh, New, and then click C-Mesh. And there it is. Double tap E to go into Mesh Editor. Click Import Mesh. Taking its time for some recording. Of course. And just click on your AMF that you recorded. So there he is. There's Sexy Zack. Not looking very sexy because he doesn't have any textures. We'll get to that later. So go to the top right corner and click Rendering, and you'll see something called Skeletons. Click it. And now we can see the skeleton that we've been assigning to him this entire time. By pressing Control, Alt, and Shift all at once, and using the mouse wheel, we can change how big he is. Press Control and A to bring him back to the center of the screen. It also brings him to the center of the grid. Pressing Control allows you to move the model any way you like. So I just want to move him slightly back. And if he's not doing the fine movements that you want, just press A. And you can do the fine adjustments now. There we go. So looking at the skeleton, you know, we've got some problems. You know, his arm isn't properly aligned. His legs aren't either. But that's actually okay. I'll explain that later. Right now, we're going to work on the hands. Now, as you can see, the hands, they're not really attached kind of just holding on. If we go to model editor by pressing double tap E, got a list, and we'll make it walk. We'll see that doesn't look very good. You know, if you look at how disjointed it is, he won't hold on to weapons properly, and that's a big no-no. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the right side, we're going to click select, make sure we're using polygons, and click volume. Volume is creates a little box that allows you to select anything within it as a polygon and you know adjust it. So we're going to highlight the parts of the hand that we need to adjust in order to make it connect to the arm. So I've highlighted the forearm and now I'm just going to hold control and move it around. Make sure you rotate it when you move it just to make sure it stays looking nice. You don't want a big dis you know, jumbled mess of an arm. So by rotating it, I put it where it belongs. It's more or less accurate. You don't want it piece for piece because it's a multiplayer model, not a cutscene. If it's for cutscenes, make sure you put the fingers in the right place. I didn't. <laughs> and just do the same for the other hand. If you want it, if you, I didn't explain this, duh. To deselect, once you've found out what you want to use with the volume key, just press the tilde key to deselect the box, and now you can just move around freely again. So we're going to move this sucker back, and rotate him back around. And I think he's just a bit too far above, just a tiny bit, so we're just going to bring him down. Bring me down, man. Now if we play that, we can see that his hands look like they're meant to, and that's good. Now the legs, as I said, they aren't a problem, since this is a test model for me for a tutorial, I'm not going to fix them. But you can do the exact same with what we did with the arms with these legs to make them fit on perfectly. They function fine without it. If you need to make any adjustments, you can do it with the volume tool, or you can do it for every single polygon individually. It's your choice. So now we have a, we have a model, and it's rigged up, but it looks like crap. So go to Mesh Editor and go to Layer. You'll see something called Polygon Maps. Double clicking this, Polygon Maps, put simply, allow you to choose which uh, They basically make a polygon only display a certain texture and nothing else. So we click New, Shade of Preset, and double click it, and create a new configuration by pressing the plus icon.
go to browse and click standard. So now we have the settings for this texture we are about to apply. With textures for Serious Sand 3, we use a very specific texture. It's called a .tex. To create a .tex, it's quite simple. You take the texture file you have, normally it's a PNG, but you might actually already have a .tga, and you open it up in paint.net. Paint.net is a freeware program, great for making textures. I'll link it to it in the description. Open it up and just save it as a .tga. Once you have that, make a file. This is a perfect time to make a file. I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it Sexy Zack. So we just created a new file called Sexy Zack. I've already got files in here, so I'm going to save my new file, sexyzack.model. Yes, I'm going to replace it. <clears throat> so that's good to go. When you create a TGA, make sure you place it in the models file. The model file must be in the player subfolder in the content, otherwise it won't work. So once you've done that, go to texture and create texture. Here's one of the TGAs I prepared earlier. This is Zach's body texture. When creating textures, you have several options you can choose for the quality. If you have a texture that has no trend, like transparent parts, use opaque 32-bit. If your uh, texture has trans uh, transparent bits or things that you know require to be see-through, click translucent. 32-bit is the highest quality we can get, and that's what we want. After clicking OK, you just created your texture. So just go to base UV map and apply a UV map with the arrow key. Go to base texture, click browse, and apply a texture. You might be thinking, where is it? Well, just go up here and click shader. There's your texture. Do this for all three of your polygon maps. If you if you've set them yourself, you should know which ones required. If you don't know what polygons you use, just make sure you apply the right ones and look and you know use reference images to make sure that you're applying the textures where they should be. I'm talking very quickly. <laughs> Alrighty, here is all textures up. You know he needs some fine tuning, as you can see. So I'm just going to reapply the while I find that and just fix that up. There we go. And this one side here here too. You can tell I've done this tutorial several parts because I know where all the problems are. So there you have it. You have a finished model. Now just make sure you save as and you're good. The next part of the tutorial involves customizing it to have custom sounds. The way to do this is you go to Model Editor and you click Configure. Config. You go to Schemes and you'll see that you already have one set, Player Schemes. You do not want to edit this. You want to, if you're ever going to edit it, save it as something new. So I'm going to go Save As, go to my Sexy Zack file, and save it as Sexy Zack Scheme. I've already got one saved, but you need to type it in yourself and save it. Doing this makes it so that even if you edit player schemes, you don't edit anybody else. If you do change a player scheme, you need to save it as something new. Because if you make an adjustment to sound schemes and you don't save it as something different, all the characters that you use are going to sound the same. And you don't want that. So I'm going to save this as sexy Zach scheme sounds, because we're about to edit the sounds that he uses. 